Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life, meditations, and just little things I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And today has just been such a fantastic day. I say that, I was kind of joking about it on my vlog last night, you know, that um, I often say in my videos that like today has been such a great day, but I have many really good days. And today I try to focus on the positivity that comes out of the day or the, the lessons that come out of it and the little small things that come out of it that make my day so great. And I'm gonna talk about that in um, at the end of this because I'm gonna read two meditations today. It's another two meditation day um, that I think is a meditation that's simple but very important um, it's been important to my path but you know I was talking about this in my vlog last night too that um, I think that building a strong foundation like I was talking about the other day in, the, in this video or in these videos um, I think building a strong foundation for your day going ahead by doing prayers or meditations in the morning, positive affirmations, gratitude, whatever, kind of prepares you for the day to come. And so once you've done that and you have like balanced yourself out in the morning and you're like, okay, I'm going into this day with a positive outlook and I'm going to go into this day with peace and serenity, it's kind of hard to disrupt that when you try to keep on coming back to that. So for me, it is vital that I wake up each day and I do those things. And since I've been doing that, it's like, it's kind of like, I don't know how to explain it, like this golden, you know, barrier of serenity around me. And like, that's not to say that like, I don't get negative at times or down or whatever. It's just that I, I quickly get back up in comparison in the past. When I didn't really have that foundation, it was harder for me to like go through the day because I would feel like God, this happens and that happens and everything horrible is happening today. I don't necessarily look at it that way. You know, I, I look at it more like life happens and it's how I respond to that. So anyway, the first meditation that we're going to read today is from Melody Beatty, The Language of Letting Go, and it is uh, from December 15th, and the meditation is called Feelings. It's okay to have and feel our feelings, all of them. Years into recovery, we may still be battling with ourselves about this issue. Of all the prohibitions we've lived with, this one is potentially the most damaging and the most long-lived. Many of us needed to shut down the emotional part of ourselves to survive certain situations. We shut down the part of us that feels anger, sadness, fear, joy, and love. We may have turned off our sexual or sensual feelings too. Many of us lived in systems with people who refused to tolerate our emotions. We were ashamed or reprimanded for expressing feelings, usually by people who were taught to repress their own. But times have changed. It is okay now for us to acknowledge and accept our emotions. We don't need to allow our emotions to control us. Neither do we need to rigidly repress our feelings. Our emotional center is a valuable part of us. It's connected to our physical well-being, our thinking, and our spirituality. Our feelings are also connected to that great gift, instinct. They enable us to give and receive love. We are neither weak nor deficient for indulging in our feelings. It means we're becoming healthy and whole. Today, I will allow myself to recognize and accept whatever feelings pass through me. Without shame, I will tune in to the emotional part of myself. I think this is such a great meditation. I love this meditation. And, you know, um, th this might be interesting to some people. So I'm going <laughs> to drop a bomb on you. Let me get a little sip of coffee first. I was not a highly emotional kid growing up. And, you know, and hearing stories that my mom and my dad have told and other people that knew me as a kid, I, I didn't throw temper tantrums. You know, I didn't cry and wail and all that kind of stuff. And I was actually very silent often, you know. And um, I was either kind of like very like putting on plays and writing musicals and singing, you know, in the library with like my, you know, microphone to the Annie soundtrack. Or I was very silent and kind of like, you know, just sitting in a corner like while the adults were talking and I was kind of observing. But I never was like somebody that, you know, would go into a toy store and if I didn't get what I wanted, th you know, through a fit and things like that. And, and those are stories that, you know, like my parents have told through the years. And in fact, uh, I remember like we had this conversation, my dad and Alex, and um, uh, Alex said something about me being an only child. And my dad got like very protective of me. And this is like five years ago. My dad got very protective of me and said Peter was never like what you hear about only children. Like he always was sharing, oversharing, you know, like there was none of that kind of selfishness. Like I want this now kind of attitude. He said never, never was he ever like that. And, um, you know, it's interesting that in later in life that I kind of was able to identify some of my feelings and emotions. I do think that a lot of the pain that I suffered like in late middle school and high school from the bullying and things like that, when I started drinking and using drugs heavily, I think it masked a lot of those emotions and feelings and allowed me to not have to feel those things. 
And I think that's often, you know, why addicts and alcoholics and just people in general use alcohol and drugs because it does mask those feelings, you know? And, um, one of the things that a good friend of mine said after we got sober together, she and I got sober very the, close together within just a matter of days. And she said to me one time about six months later, we were driving and she had broken up with this guy that she was dating at the time. And, um, she was really upset about it. And she said, you know, the thing that sucks about sobriety is you still have all the emotions and feelings, but you can't do anything about it. Like with drugs and alcohol. And I think it's so true, you know? And so you're forced to take a look at those feelings. When my mother passed away in 2008, I was very numb. I didn't really know how to feel. I, there was nobody really directing me through that. And although I knew a lot about grief and the grieving process, you know, I had read the books, I, you know, could teach it and all that kind of stuff, but I had never really gone through it on a personal level. I had lost people before, but nowhere near the feeling that I had when my mom passed away. And the only thing, the only way I can explain it, if you've lost a parent um, or a sibling or somebody close, a child, I'm sure it's similar. I can't even imagine that is that it's just surreal. It's just absolutely surreal. You can't even explain the feeling to somebody, right? So I just kind of was like in this numb days. I wasn't sad, I wasn't happy. I just was like, okay, let's just, I guess we go on with life. And then I didn't go to 12 step meetings for several years. And I've talked a lot about that on here. And I went back four years later. And when I came back in, you know, I decided that, um, when people, I, I was really attracted to emotional honesty. And so when people would say things like, this is where I'm at today, or this is where I'm at, I had always been told to tell on myself in meetings about emotionally where I was at. And cause you know, there are people that are dying in 12 step meetings cause they're not being honest about emotionally how they feel. And that's one of the saddest things I've witnessed, you know, is that people that are sober and are more miserable sober than they were using. It just, it breaks my heart. Um, cause there's a solution to that. And so when I came back in, I was like, um, I'm willing to go to any lengths to emotionally show where I'm at. And so like when I was in meetings, I would say things like, I'm not okay today. Like I'm really upset today. I'm really sad. I'm really angry, you know? And I was just, I was like emotionally so open and honest about that. And what happened was it attracted people around me that have since become my support network that were just as emotionally open and honest, you know? And, um, I think we call that, you know, many of these people today are some of the most authentic and genuine people I've ever met in my entire life, you know, honestly. And they work through their issues and they're honest about their emotions today. They're not ashamed of them. They're not afraid of them, you know. And um, it's interesting having been like on YouTube because my first year of vlogging, I cried a lot telling stories about my mom. And one of the things that really helped me was when I came back into 12-step rooms, you know, I would talk a lot about my mom to the point where people were like, how long are you going to talk about your mom? And I would cry and get so upset and sometimes want to walk out of the meeting and stuff, you know, but over time it got better, you know, and people would share their stories with me and they would stop me afterwards and we would stand there and talk and they'd say, I lost a parent too. And this is you know, what it was like, or, you know, I was using when I lost a parent, be so thankful that you were sober, you know, or that you and your mom shared sobriety together. And so I started seeing it differently. And I also started seeing the fact that like I had so many friends of mine that whose parents had passed away suddenly, you know, and they didn't get to say goodbye. And I was standing in a room with my mom, you know, and then I started seeing it as an honor and a privilege that I was able to be there with her at the time of her passing. And it really changed my perspective. So my being emotionally honest allowed me to see a completely different perspective than I ever would have seen, you know, after that. And that changed really the course of the way that I spoke in recovery, because then I knew that my emotional language was just as important as my physical language. So I think, you know, we, we have in society, I think this very negative attitude often towards crying and things like that and showing emotion. You know, we've talked a lot on here to, you know, this year, or I've talked a lot on here and you guys have commented a lot about the difference between reacting and responding and then the choice to not react at all. And I think if I'm honest with myself, often when I would react in the past, it would be out of emotion. It would be out of anger or sadness or whatever. And almost sometimes I think that we want somebody else to feel the same way that we feel, if that makes sense. And you know, what I realized today is I don't have to do that. You know, I, I have the choice to not react at all and just take a look at what my part is in all of that. But, you know, I think there is a stigma in society that like, you know, to cry is to be weak. And it's interesting because even like on YouTube, I've gotten so many of those comments, you know, like grow up, you old man, stop crying. And I'm like, old men still have tears too. You know, old men still feel emotion, you know, and, uh, people that have like worked in the field, like I have still have emotion. They still get angry. They still get upset. They still get sad, you know, like whatever you are in life. Okay. If you are human, you're going to have some emotion attached to it. Right. And 
but we have a choice in how we respond to that. And, you know, and I've taken a, a strong look at that in the last, you know, year just in how I respond to things and if I cry or if I get angry or whatever. So, you know, I think the other thing is, is that those comments that at the beginning of YouTube, like they kind of like rattled me a little bit. Like if I would cry in a vlog or whatever, and somebody would say like, stop crying. Today, I know that it says more about the other person than it does about me. And I think it's kind of sad for that person, honestly, you know, that they don't have the ability to allow themselves to feel emotion. And I don't want to live my life that way. I honestly don't. You know, if I need to cry, I need to cry. Period. End of story. You know, like I was finishing this audiobook that I listened to today and it's about a serial killer. It was about the Golden State Killer. And at the end of it, listening to the victim's stories, I just was bawling in the car listening to it, you know? And I'm just... I don't know, I feel blessed that I'm allowed to feel my, that I allow myself to feel my emotions today and that they just kind of come out naturally. And one of the greatest things that ever happened to me in the grieving process was that, you know, I don't know that I necessarily consciously pushed down my emotions, but once I started talking about my mom and I allowed myself to like kind of process what was going on, if it was a random Tuesday and a song came on the radio, I pulled into a parking lot and I would just like listen to the song, you know, some Bob Dylan song that my mom li liked or, you know, The Moon is a Harsh, Harsh Mistress by Judy Collins or something and I would just, or she loved Led Zeppelin, a Led Zeppelin song and I'd just sit there and allow myself to cry. I'd allow myself to feel the emotion and then I was able to move through it instead of moving on and I think that's the difference and I've talked a lot about that on here recently. So. Allow yourself to feel your emotions. Don't be afraid of it, you know? Don't be afraid of looking stupid because you're laughing so hard or you're so happy or you're dancing around or you're excited. You know, often sometimes in society, that is portrayed as negative too. It's like, hold it down a little bit, okay? You don't wanna be that way. And so then we have all these colorful spirits and souls out there that hold it down because they don't wanna be embarrassed when other people are like, why are you acting that way? When all they're acting is fun, they're having fun, you know? So allow all of your emotions to come out. We only live once. This is, there's no rush rehearsal here. You know what I mean? Okay. So the next meditation that I am going to read, um, is from Linda Pacone's The Daily Book of Positive Quotations. I love this book. It's so positive. It's so happy. And the one for today, I just think is so fantastic. And it's, um, something that I talk about on here often, but December 15th, sweet, simple things. And the quote is by Laura Ingalls Wilder, who I absolutely love. And I, I list, my mom and I watched Little House on the Prairie the whole time that I was growing up. So she says, I am beginning to learn that it is the sweet, simple things of life, which are the real ones, after all. A baby's giggle, the warmth of flannel sheets, a favorite meal. The simple things can bring us much happiness. We enjoy these simple things for what they are, but also for what they evoke. People we have loved, times of peace and contentment, the promise the future holds. If I make a list of things that make me happy, few of those items will be extravagant. And I think it's such a great, you know, when I think about the things throughout the day, you know, I, I make a gratitude list in my head in the evenings. I used to do it written down, but now I go through my head and, you know, I always say to myself, like, you know, like, or, you know, to my higher power, I'm like, I'm grateful for um, my life and my health and my sobriety. Those are always like the three par paramount things. And then my husband and our marriage and then the dogs and the house and the car. But when I look through the day, you know, and the little things that make me happy through the day, it's, you know, like, I don't know, like I woke up today and like Pee Pee was like standing right there, you know, staring at me. And it just like, I woke up with a laugh because it was just so sweet and so hilarious, you know? And then just like, I walked outside just a little bit ago and um, it was like raining outside. I took uh, the dogs outside and Boo and Tucker like literally like walked right down and they walked right back. It just cracked me up, you know? Or like a great cup of coffee, you know? Or a great book that I just finished today. You know, that's something that I'll have in my head for for months and months now, you know, and thinking about all that and, you know, a good dinner with my husband and we planned a trip the other night and, and I'm excited about that. And it's not just about the trip. It's about the looking forward to the trip, you know, and, um, all of it and Christmas with the family and, you know, my favorite little food or whatever, or brunch on Sundays. Cause we go to brunch every Sunday and sleeping in and laughing with my best friend in the car, driving around to the point that, you know, we just almost think we're going to bust at the seams. All of that makes my life so important, you know? I always smell flowers when I'm walking through grocery stores or Walmart or whatever. I always stop and smell the flowers. And I know that it's so incredibly cheesy, but there are many of you out there that after you watch this video, you will do the same thing from now on. I always stop and smell the flowers. I love you guys, and I will see you later. Bye.